Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. I'm having a sneeze attack. If I sneeze again, sorry. In advance. I know I give the UK a lot of love. I'm super interested in the UK and British history, but I really love to learn about history of a lot of countries. Let's learn about the Netherlands, shall we? Original link to the video from Sweeney, top of the description. My name's Connor, if you're new. Let's learn. By Audible. This episode is supported by Audible. Amazon Prime members can get an incredible 66% off their first three months at audible.com slash S-U-I-B-H-N-E. Only you're available interested, for a limited time, time so sign up fast. Die moerasige en rivergevolde lage landen was een doonbevolkt gebied onder het heilige rond. I was not ready for that. It's very blue. Ah. That could fix it a little. Okay, the swampy and river snaked low countries were in a sparsely populated area under the Holy Roman Empire. En rivergevolde lage landen was een doonbevolkt gebied onder het heilige Roomse rijk. Waar zij er goed waren het bouwen van dijken, dikes, kanalen canals. en windmolens om water uit hun land te pompen. En één Europa's handelscentrum en één broodman te creëren. Die vroege Nederlanders werden beroemd om om handel, scheepsbouw en hydro-engineering. En die Frankische taal die daar werd gesproken begon te evolueren naar die Nederlandse taal. Of die taal van het lage land. En dus werden de Nederlanders geboren. Let's go! If you're not ready to learn, sit in the back of the class. Feudalism held sway in the land, and as the trade increased, the cities of Amsterdam, Brugge, and Antwerpen prospered. And soon these trading posts became more and more integrated into the Hanseatic League, a sort of trade agreement in the North Sea after the Viking raids had ceased. Through both conquest and inheritance, the Dutch counties came under the control of the House of Burgundy. Sorry, I had heard the term Hanseatic League so many times, and I never learned about it. But finally, I've watched some videos and learned about it, and it's the first time I've heard it in a video. Um, but then yeah, both sorry. Conqu sorry. a sort of trade agreement in the North Sea after the Viking raids had ceased. Through both conquest and inheritance, the Dutch counties came under the control of the House of Burgundy, who then passed it on to the Austrian House of Habsburg. They pulled the Netherlands out of the Hanseatic League and then took over Spain? control of trade themselves. This is known as the era of the 17 provinces. But by this point, the merchants had begun to embrace Calvinist Protestantism. This led to the Dutch Revolt, also known as the 80 Years' War. Oh, okay. Hold on. Okay. All right. Okay. The era of the 17 provinces. But by this point, the merchants had begun to embrace Calvinist Protestantism. This led to the Dutch Revolt, also known as the 80 Years' War, also known as the Dutch War for Independence. The war was a complex mix of secular, religious, and mercantile motives, but saw the northern provinces unite in the Treaty of Utrecht against the Spanish Union of Arras. The Spanish marched north, though, and managed to take back most of the south. In 1581, the United Provinces declared themselves free and independent, and the war became about securing that declaration. During the war, the Protestants in the south fled to the north, and the French Calvinists, called the Huguenots, followed suit, making Netherlands a firmly Protestant-controlled nation. And in 1588 became a- Guys, do these borders right here in encapsulate the all of the Benelux countries? Like, is, is Luxembourg, Belgium, and Netherlands all within? I didn't realize how uh, how close they were uh, historically. Um, obviously, they're close to each other, so they're gonna in their origin. I meant I, I didn't realize how. Protestants in the south close. fled to the north, and the French Calvinists, called the Huguenots, followed suit, making Netherlands a firmly Protestant-controlled nation. And in 1588, became a confederated republic because they couldn't really find a good king. Instead, they instituted the Stadtholders with the House of Orange Nassau, but only with the province's approval. The Dutch were very good at two things by this point, water and money. So they combined them and formed the Verenigte Oostendische Company to begin trade in the Indian Ocean. The Dutch Revolt overlapped with the broader Thirty Years' War in which Spain was defeated and finally recognized as independent in the Peace of Westphalia. Jewish settlement increased as the tolerance of the new republic was appealing to the persecuted Sephardic Jews, as well as growth in the small community of Ashkenazi Jews. 
the VOC brought immense. What is the difference? It is are are the Sephardic Jews more like northern and north west African, whereas the Hasid are the Ashkenazi Jews are more Middle Eastern origin. I I I'm. I'm shooting in the dark here I, as guesses. I, I'm not exactly sure. Wealth to the Dutch Republic, revolutionizing modern bank persecuted Sephardic Jews, as well as growth in the small community of Ashkenazi Jews. The VOC brought immense wealth to the Dutch Republic, revolutionizing modern banking and finance. Dutch citizens enjoyed shares in the company, helping spread the wealth more evenly. This fueled the Dutch golden ages of art, architecture, and building of universities, making huge strides in science and medicine. The VOC dominated trade for half a century, founding trade colonies all over the world. It wasn't all rainbows and sunshine. The VOC operated with little to no oversight. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. There... There seems to be a sort of similarity between... like. It seems like the Dutch are almost like a Nordic country, but they're they're not. What am I trying to say? Um, they they seem to be much more similar to Denmark and Norway and Sweden, even more so than maybe Germany. I don't quote don't quote me on that. I don't know. It Forget wasn't it. all rainbows and sunshine. The VOC operated with little to no oversight and were often very violent and engaged heavily in the slave trade. They eventually lost this dominance to the English, but their legacy as engineers and shipbuilders and financiers continued to spur growth. This became aggravated by Dutch merchants lending money to foreign powers, thereby protecting and growing their own wealth, which simultaneously stagnated the economy in the Netherlands while propping up foreign nations. But you know, that's capitalism for you. The decline in prosperity and the devastating Anglo-Dutch wars soon made them prime targets for French revolutionaries overthrew the Dutch and created the Batavian Republic, then a monarchy under Napoleon's Sounds brother familiar. before final annexation into the French Empire, including the Southern Netherlands. How many brothers did Napoleon have? Wasn't Joseph already supposed to be like the, the monarch in Spain? So who's this brother? Netherlands before final annexation into the French Empire, including the Southern Netherlands. When Napoleon was defeated, the Congress of Vienna created the United Kingdom of the Netherlands, merging with the Southern Netherlands to create a buffer state between France and the German states. William I of the House of Orange was made king. However, so how did uh, how did Belgium and Luxembourg end up becoming separate from the Netherlands? I wonder. I'm not sure if it was in states. William I of the House of Orange was made king. However, it was pretty short-lived because the Southern Netherlands was almost all Catholic ah. and the French language was far more important there. The South fought an independence war and broke away from the Dutch, forming the nation of Belgium. The Dutch returned to their economic ways and were decidedly neutral during the First World War. After the chaos died down, they found themselves battling the Great Depression mostly by furthering trade with their colonies in Suriname and the Dutch East Indies. This was halted during the Second World War, in which the Netherlands was invaded to bypass the Maginot Line. The small country fell to the Germans and its Jewish population were deported and killed in the Holocaust. Rotterdam, the second largest city and major trade... What's her name? Anne Frank, right? ...port was fired in the Holocaust. Rotterdam, the second largest city and major trade port, was firebombed and completely destroyed by the Luftwaffe. The Dutch East Indies was lost to Japan in 1942. Operation Market Garden was part of a larger strategy to cross the Rhine River to advance into the Northern Netherlands and Northern Germany, but it was deadlock and they ultimately failed to capture the crossing at Arnhem in September of 1944. Instead, the troops would concentrate on Vessel and Rees on the Rhine to liberate the Netherlands, punching a deep hole through German territory and invading from the east. This incredible military achievement saw the greatest paratrooper landing in history, with more than 1.2 million allies involved. A massive success for the allies who were able to advance around the Dutch choke point. You can Has paratrooping really been used in any big way in wars since World War II? Does anyone know? You can learn more about this real 
success for the Allies who were able to advance around the Dutch choke point. You can learn more about this real world event in the incredible audiobook Four Hours of Fury by James M. Fennellan for free for new members when you sign up for Audible, an extremely well-researched and well-documented narrative of the battle for which he had a special interest as a paratrooper himself. And there is a special deal for Amazon Prime members. Until July 31, you can sign up for an Audible membership and get an incredible 66% off your first three months, basically getting three months for the price of one. New Audible Bellatrix. members can listen to this book for free or choose your own in the vast library of fiction and non-fiction and copious amounts of history. And you even get one free audiobook and two Audible originals per month for free. Anyone's interested in this guy's and you with heard an it Audible here. membership. Head to audible.com slash S-U-I-B-H-N-E or text S-U-I-B-H-N-E to 500-500 and listen for free today with Audible. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And if you really enjoy the content, you can support on Patreon. Follow me on Twitter for any updates. Until next time. Is that uh, Peter the Great? Um, Voltaire or something? What was I going to say? Oh my god, what was I going to say? If you really enjoy the... Oh my god, I'm, I'm going to freak out. 500 and listen for free today with Audible. I had a great closing statement, and I hate when I have to edit and then put in a new statement at the end. <gasps> Connor! He has the ER, though. Interesting video, guys. Would appreciate any answers to any of the questions I might have had or any comments at all. Would love if you like and subscribe. It's free. And it would make it easier for me to see you next time and watch another video. Love you all. See you next time.